Hello everybody. In this video, we are going to review multiple random variables. We are going to solve problems to show marginal probability distribution, mean and variance of multiple variables, covariance, correlation coefficient, joint probability. We are going to prove dependency and we are going to compute the value of C for PDF to be a density function. Let's begin. Problem number one. The bivariate distribution of x and y is described below. Find the marginal probability distribution of x and y and compute the mean and variance of x and y. Here we were given a table. I'm going to rewrite this table for us to understand better. Here our x value is given vertically and our y value given horizontally. And this is x1, and this is x2 value, and this is y1 and y2 value. So this cell here, which is 0 0.26, is our x1 and y1. That's the intersection of x1 and y1 value. And we can also rewrite this as coordinate form, which is 1, 1, which is f1, 1. And this cell here is our f2, 1, which means x2, y1. And their value is 0 0.44. This cell here, which is 0 0.12, is our x1 and y2 value. And coordinate-wise, it is 1, 2. And this is 2, 2. And here, x2 value and y2 value is 0 0.18. Now we can solve the problem. We're going to extend this table and write the totals of the marginals, both horizontally and vertically. If we add this row horizontally, it's going to be 0 0.17. And if we add this row horizontally, it's going to be 0 0.30. If we add this column vertically, it's going to be 0 0.38. And if we add this vertically, it's going to be 0 0.62. And if we continue adding this horizontal and vertical column and row will be equal to 1. So 0 0.70 plus 0 0.30 is 1, 0 0.38 plus 0 0.62 is 1. And that is correct because the total probability has to be equal to 1. So this is our check here. If this is not equal to 1, then there must be a mistake. Or if this is not equal to 1, then you need to go back and check your numbers. Now we're going to find the marginal probability distribution of x. So for x1 specifically, it is the sum of that column, x1 and x1, which is 0 0.38. And for x2, it is 0 0.62, because x is given vertically. And y is given horizontally. y1 value is total 0 0.70 cumulatively. And y2 value is 0 0.30. Now we found the marginal probability distribution. Now let's go ahead and calculate the mean and variance. Mean by definition is x times probability of x. For expectation of x or mean of x, we're going to multiply 1 times x1 probability plus 2 times x2 probability. Since x1 is this one, 0 0.38, I'm going to multiply 1 times 0 0.38 plus 2 times 0 0.62. And that's going to be the expectation. And this is together is 1.62. So mean is 1.62. For variance, first we need to know expectation of x squared. Expectation of x squared is given by squaring the x values and multiplying it with the same probability. 
So this value will be equal to 2.86. Now variance by definition is equal to expectation of x squared minus expectation of x the quantity squared which is going to be 2.86 minus 1.62 the quantity squared and that's going to be equal to 0 0.2356. Now we're going to compute the expectation and variance of y. So we're going to follow the similar way. Expectation of y is given by y times probability of y, which is 1 times probability of y1 plus 2 times probability of y2. And y1 is given horizontally, 0 0.70, and y2 is 0 0.30 and this is going to be 1.3 now we need to find expectation of y squared which we have to square the 1 and 2 y values and this is going to be equal to 1.90 and variance by definition is equal to expectation of y squared minus expectation of y the quantity squared so it's going to be 1.90 minus 1.30 the quantity squared so that's going to be equal to 0 0.21 so our variance is 0 0.21 and our expectation we found 1.30 problem number two the distributions of x and y are described below if x and y are independent, determine the joint probability distribution of x and y. Independency, by definition, is probability of x intersect y is equal to product of probability of x times probability of y. So we're going to use this definition to solve this problem. So the cell here we're going to compute is the intersection of x being 0 and y being 1. And probability that x being 0 and y being 1 is equal to probability of x being 0 times probability that y being 1. And we're going to pull up this from the table here. Probability that x is 0 is 0 0.25 and probability that y is 1 is 0 0.47 and that product will be the answer and if we multiply that we're going to obtain 0 0.1175 so that is the probability that x is being 0 and y is being 1 now the second cell here is probability that x is being 1 intersects y is being 1 and again, by definition, it is the product. And if we pull from the table, x1 is 0.75% and y1 is 0.47%. And their product will be equal to 0.3525. Next cell is probability that x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 2. And their product is equal to, from the table, x is being 0 is 0.25 times y is being 2 is 0 0.19. And their product will be equal to 0 0.0475. Next cell is probability that x is equal to 1, intersection, y is being 2. And their product from the table is equal to 0 0.75 times 0 0.19, which is going to be 0 0.1425. Next cell is x being 0. 
and y being 3. And their product from the table equals to 0 0.25 times 0 0.34, which is 0 0.085. And the last cell is x being 1 and y being 3. And if we pull this from the table, x being 1 is 0.75% here, and y being 3 is 0.34% here. And if we take the multiplication, their product will be 0 0.255. Problem number 3. Canadians who visit the United States often buy liquor and cigarettes, which are much cheaper in the United States. However, there are limitations. Canadians visiting the United States for more than two days are allowed to bring into Canada one bottle of liquor and one carton of cigarettes. A Canada custom agent has produced the following joint probability distribution of the number of bottles of liquor and the number of cartons of cigarettes imported by Canadians who have visited the United States for two or more days. So we have a table here find the marginal probability distribution of the number of bottles imported. So we're going to extend this table and find the marginals on the edge. So we're going to add horizontally and vertically. 0 0.62 plus 0 0.07 is 0 0.69 and 0 0.16 plus 0 0.15 is 0 0.31. And 0 0.62 plus 0 0.16 is 0 0.78. And 0 0.07 plus 0 0.15 is 0 0.22. Now we have the marginals. So probability of zero bottles is zero bottles is this column. The total marginal probability is 0 0.69. One bottle is this column which is 0 0.31. Zero cartons is this row is 0 0.78 and one carton is this row which is 0 0.22. Now we're going to compute the mean and the variance of the number of bottles of liquor imported. So we're going to use the definition of expectation which is x times p. So 0 times the total probability of being 0 plus 1 times total probability of being 1 for number of bottles. So for bottles, total 0 probability is 0 0.69 and 1 is 0 0.31. This is expectation of x. So this is 0, so the answer is 0 0.31. The variance by definition is expectation of x squared minus expectation of x the quantity squared. So for this we need to find expectation of x squared. So for this we're going to use exact same setup for expectation but we're going to square the x values. And we obtain again 0 0.31. And if we apply the variance formula, 0 0.31 minus 0 0.31, the quantity squared. So the answer is here, 0 0.2139. Now we're going to use a similar way to find the expectation and variance of y or number of cartons. So expectation of y, 0 times for cartons of cigarette being 0 is 0 0.78 plus 1 times 1 cartons of cigarettes is 0 0.22 so the answer is 0 0.22 so expectation is 0 0.22 for variance first we need to find expectation of y squared which we need to square the y values and this is again 0 0.22 now we can apply the variance formula. 
so it's going to be 0 0.22 which is expectation of y squared minus expectation of y the quantity squared minus expectation of y the quantity squared so the answer is here 0 0.1716 now we are going to compute the covariance and correlation coefficient. Covariance by definition is equal to expectation of xy minus expectation of x times expectation of y. So we need to find here expectation of xy. And if you would like to know how this formula is derived, you can watch some other videos or I can prepare how it is proved. So expectation of x and y together is the x value times y value multiplied by their common probability. So we can use table practically. So expectation of x, y x value times y value which is 0 times 0 times their common probability which is 0 0.62 so this is multiplication plus the second cell here 0 times 1 times their common probability plus the third cell here is 1 times 0 times 0 0.07 plus the last cell here is 1 times 1 0 0.15 so 0 cancels everything here and the answer is 0 0.15 so we know that covariance of x and y is 0 0.15 we already found the expectation of x and y, so we can apply covariance formula, which is 0 0.15 minus expectation of x was 0 0.31 and expectation of y was 0 0.22 and this covariance turns into 0 0.0818. Now we are going to find the correlation coefficient. Correlation coefficient or little letter r or Greek letter rho by definition is covariance of xy over sigma x and sigma y which is standard deviation of x and standard deviation of y. Let it not scare you this is exactly square root of variance of x and variance of y exact same thing you can use either so we found the covariance of x and y which is 0 0.0818 and we already have the variances of both so the variance of x is 0 0.2139 times the variance of y is 0 0.1716 so this is going to be the answer here so I'm going to write it here neatly 0 0.0818 over square root of 0 0.2139 times 0 0.1716 and calculator can handle it Problem number four. The random variables x and y have joint probability distribution specified by the following table. So we're going to find the expectation of x, y. Expectation of x, y is x value times y value times their probability of x and y. So we can follow it from the table. So for the first cell, so that 0 will cancel everything, so we can cancel this column and we can cancel this row and we can cancel this cell as well. So we are left with only 3, 8 here.
and 1 times 1 times 3 8 is the expectation of x and y so let me do one sample row for you to understand better but 0 will cancel everything so for the first cell here we're going to multiply x value which is 0 times y value which is 0 times 1 fourth plus the second cell 0 times 1 times 0 and so on so you, you need to visit each cell now we're going to find the covariance of xy covariance of xy by definition is their expectation together minus the product of their expectations separately we already found the expectation of xy which is 3 8 now we need to find expectation of x for this let's extend the marginals and find the expectation of x and y the total probability for x0 is here 1 4 plus 1 8 which is 3 8 and the total probability for x1 here is 1 4 plus 3 8 which is 5 8 the total probability for y0 is 1 4 plus 1 4 which is 2 4 which is 1 half total probability for y1 is 3 8 and total probability for y2 is 1 8 all we are doing is just adding okay now we're going to find the expectation of x which is x value times the probability of x so 0 times the total probability of being 0 is 3 8 plus 1 times 5 8 so the answer is 5 8 now we know that expectation of x is 5 8 now we're going to find expectation of y so y value is 0 times the total 0 is 1 half plus 1 times 3 8 plus 2 times 1 8 this cancels so 3 8 plus 2 8 is 5 8 so the covariance of xy is 3 8 minus 25 over 64 which is negative 0 0.015625 then this is covariance of xy now we're going to find the correlation the correlation formula is correlation is indicated with letter r or greek letter rho or c o r r the formula for it is covariance of xy over square root of variance of x times variance of y or covariance of xy over standard deviation of x standard deviation of y so we need to find the variance of x and variance of y so variance of x is expectation of x squared minus expectation of x the quantity squared we need to find the expectation and expectation of x squared expectation of x is x value times the corresponding probability so 0 times 3 8 this 0 x times 3 8 the total being 0 plus 1 times 5 8 So this is 5 8. So 5 8 is the expectation of x. Now expectation of x squared is 0 squared times 3 8 plus 1 squared times 5 8. It is still 5 8. So 5 8 minus 5 8 the quantity squared, which is going to be. 23 43 75 so this is the variance of x 
that we are going to use it here. Now we need to find the variance of y. Variance of y is similarly expectation of y squared minus expectation of y. So expectation of y is the y value times the y probability. So 0 times 2 fourth plus 1 times 3 eighth plus 2 times 1 eighth which we find as 5 over 8. Okay, expectation of y squared is 0 squared times this, 1 squared times this, 2 squared times this. So 7 over 8. So expectation of y squared minus expectation of y the quantity squared will be 7 over 8 minus 5 over 8 the quantity squared which is going to be 48, 43, 75. And this is the variance of y, which we are going to use it here. Now we can write the formula. So the correlation is covariance of xy, which we found already, negative 0 0.015625, divided by square root of variance of x which is 0 0.234375 times variance of y which is 0 0.484375 so this is the answer now we're going to find the covariance and correlation coefficient of uv for this we're going to use the properties of covariance so we're going to use this property here. So first we need to solve u in terms of x. So here u is equal to x minus 7 divided by 5. So 1 fifth x minus 7 fifth. And the v value here is y minus 5 divided by 8. So 1 eighth y minus 5 over 8. Now we know u and v values. So we can place covariance of u comma y in terms of x and y. That is going to be covariance of 1 fifth x minus 7 fifth comma 1 eighth y minus 5 eighth. And if we apply the covariance property number 3, so their coefficients will be multiplied, which is going to be 1 fifth times 1 eighth of covariance of xy. We already found covariance of xy, which was negative 0 0.015625. So 1 fourth times this number is the covariance of uv. So 1 over 40 times negative 0 0.015625 is the answer. Now for the correlation, we're going to use the properties of correlation again. For correlation, we're going to use this property. So we already have covariance of xy, which is 1 40th times negative this number. divided by square root of variance of x times variance of y but it's going to be a squared variance x times b squared variance b so we're going to square the coefficients which is one fifth squared times variance of x we already found it 0 0.234375 times the covariance of y squared times the variance of y, which is 0 0.48, 43, 75. So all we did here was to solve u and v in terms of x and y, and turn it into ax plus b type of linear variance, and then use this formula. 
So this whole equation is the answer for correlation for our problem here. Problem number five. Applicants for the University of Statland take two tests, one for writing ability and the other one on critical thinking. And normalizers scores are recorded on each between zero and one. For a given applicant, let X be the score on the writing test and Y the score on the critical thinking test. A model for the joint probability density function for the two test scores can be taken as given here. So we're going to find the marginal density of the writing test score and we're going to evaluate it at the point x equals to one half. Marginal density probability of x is given by the integral from 0 to 1 because that is what it is supported between 0 and 1 of the density function which is x plus y with respect to dy. Because we are computing the density function of x, we are going to take it with respect to dy. So here we are going to treat x as the constant. So it's going to be x times y plus y squared over 2 from 0 to 1. And if we apply the fundamental theorem of calculus, it's going to be x plus 1 half is the answer. So this is the marginal density of x. We need to evaluate it at the point x equals to 1 half. So fx of 1 half is equal to 1 half plus 1 half, which is 1. Now we're going to compute the marginal density of y, which is critical thinking. So for that, we're going to do the similar way. We're going to integrate from 0 to 1 because y is supported between 0 and 1 of the density function x plus y. This time we're going to do it with respect to dx. So when you're computing the marginal density of x, you're going to integrate it with respect to dy. And when you're doing the marginal density of y, you're going to integrate the PDF with respect to dx, just exactly the opposite. This time y is treated as constant. So antiderivative of x is x squared, one half x squared or x squared over two, plus since y is here constant, xy from zero to one. And again, it's going to be one half plus y if we apply f of b minus f of a. And this time we're going to find fy of one third at this PDF. So it's going to be one half plus one third, which is going to be five over six. Now we're going to prove if these two tests are independent or not. By the definition of independency, probability of fx x and fxy has to be equal to their product fx of x times probability of fy of y. This is our original density function in the problem which is x plus y and we already computed marginal density of x and marginal density of y and we can check whether it is equal to our joint probability density which is x plus y or not. So x plus y is equal to the marginal density function of x was x plus one half and the marginal density of y was y plus one half and if we distribute we're going to obtain xy one half x one half y plus one fourth and we know that this is not equal to x plus y so they are not independent 
they are dependent. Problem number six. The random variables x and y have a joint distribution given by the table below. So we're going to find the marginal distribution of x and y. To be able to explain clearly, I'm going to rewrite this table in the coordinate wise. So probability that x is equal to negative 1, comma y equal to 0 is equal to 1 tenth. And probability that x is equal to negative 1 and y is equal to 2 is equal to 1 tenth. So we're going to find the intersection here. x is being negative 1 and y is being 2. Let's continue. x is being negative 1 and y being 4 is equal to 1 tenth. And x being 0, y being 0 is equal to 1 tenth. x being 0, y being 2 is equal to 2 tenth. And x being 0, y being 4 is equal to 1 tenth and probability that x is equal to 1 and y is being 0, 2 and 4 is given 1 tenth, 1 tenth and 1 tenth. So the first problem is asking, what is the probability that x is 0? So probability that x is 0 is that all this 3. So sum of 1 tenth plus 2 tenth plus 1 tenth is 4 over 10. So find the expected value of x. Expected value of x is given by negative 1 times the total probability of negative 1 plus 0 times the total probability of 0 we don't need to find that and 1 times the total probability of 1 the total probability of x being negative 1 is the sum of these three values here which is 3 tenth and sum of x being 1 is 3 tenth as well and the total is 0 Actually, you can find it from the symmetry as well. So this is 0 from negative 1 to positive 1 equally away. So negative part cancels the positive part. So this is 0. Now let's go ahead and find the next one. Find the expected value of y. Expected value of y is given by the multiplication of y values times the probability of corresponding y values so it's going to be 0 times total 0 probability of y is equals to 0 plus 2 times total probability of y being 2 plus 4 times total probability of y being 4 we don't need to find this because 0 times anything is 0 2 times y being 2 so y being 2 is this probability that probability and this probability which is 1 tenth plus 2 tenth plus 1 tenth which is 4 over 10 and y being 4 is this probability that probability and this probability which is 1 tenth 1 tenth and 1 tenth which is 3 over 10 and total probability here is 8 over 10 plus 12 over 10 which is 20 over 10 which is 2 Now we are going to find the probability the mass function of z equals to x plus y. And then what is the probability of z equals to 3? Now we can write the mass function of z given by x plus y. So the mass function of z given by x plus y is the z values of x plus y. So if we add the x value and the y value here, negative 1 plus 0 is negative 1. So z is equal to negative 1 here. Here z is equal to 1, z is equal to 3, 
negative 1 plus 4 z is equal to 0 z is equal to 2 z is equal to 4 z is equal to 1 z is equal to 3 and finally z is equal to 5 so those are the values that z can take so we can table it negative 1 through 5 So those are the z values and probability of z values at that point is at negative 1 only this point so 1 tenth at 0 only this z value which is 1 tenth at 1 here this value and here this value which is 1 tenth plus 1 tenth 2 tenth 2 only z value is 2 is here which is 2 tenth z is equal to 3 only here and here which is together 2 tenth and z is equal to 4 only here which is 1 tenth and z is equal to 5 only here which is 1 tenth and the sum of these probabilities have to be equal to 1 that's the check that that it is our probability mass function now probability that z is equal to 3 is 2 tenth from the table we can see so which is 1 fifth now we're going to find the expectation of z expectation of z is given by z value times probability of z okay so it's going to be negative 1 times 1 tenth plus 0 times 1 tenth we don't need to write it so 1 times 2 tenth plus 2 times 2 tenth plus 3 times 2 tenth and 4 times 1 tenth Finally, 5 times 1 tenth. If we add all these probabilities, we're going to get 10, 15, 19, 20. 20 over 10, which is 2. We could also find this using the expectation of z is equal to sum of expectation of x plus expectation of y, which was 0 plus 2. It was 2. But I wanted to show the mass function and how we calculate joint x. Problem number 7. The joint probability density function of x and y is given below. Find c and the expected value of x. So for c, we're going to set up the original given density function and set it equal to 1. So we can find the value of c. We can pull c out and y squared minus 196x to the second times e to the negative y. So since we have x boundaries are with respect to y, so we're going to use y in the inside integral. And we're going to do it with respect to dx dy. So 0 to infinity. And if you solve this integral either manually or integral calculator this is not difficult so you're going to end up with c e to the negative y y to the third over 7 minus y to the third over 21 and this is the outer integral and then if you do it again you're going to end up with 4c over 7 is the answer and since we set it equal to 1 then we set it equal to 1 and solve for c. So c will be 7 over 4. Now we are going to find the expectation of x. For expectation of x, we are going to use the same integral. Instead of c, we are going to write our value c because we know our density function now. And we are going to multiply the whole density function with x because the definition of expectation is x time f of x so this is our f of x and we multiply it by x and if you do this integral using the same method you're going to end up with zero so expectation of x is zero problem number eight let f of x be this density function so find the following 
find the c value such that fx of y is a probability density function. For f of x to be probability density function, this integral has to be equal to 1. So we're going to set this integral and make it equal to 1 and so for c. So integral from 0 to 1 for x value and 0 to 1 for y value, we can take c out because it is constant. c times x to the 5, y to the 7, dx dy. This is power rule. So x to the 6th over 6 from 0 to 1 times y to the 8 over 8 from 0 to 1. And we have times c. And we're going to set it equal to 1. And if we apply f of b minus f of a fundamental theorem of calculus, we obtain here 1 sixth. Because we plug in 1, 1 sixth over 6 minus 0 sixth over 6, which is 1 sixth. Times, this is going to be 1 eighth. And here c over 48 is equal to 1, then c has to be 48. So now we found the value of c. Now we know our density function now, because c value is 48. Now we are going to compute the expectation of x and y. Expectation of x by definition is the integral of the x boundaries from 0 to 1 and y boundaries from 0 to 1 x times the density function and we have 48 that we can pull out x to the 5th y to the 7th dx dy so this integral turns into x to the 6th time y to the 7th dx dy and the same boundaries again we can apply the power rule x to the 7 over 7 from 0 to 1 and y to the 8 over 8 from 0 to 1 times 48 so this is 1 over 7 and this is 1 over 8 so it is going to be 48 over 56 which is going to be 6 over 7 now we know expectation of x we're going to set the same for y expectation of y again by definition the integral boundaries y times the density function and we can pull for the 8 in front of the integral sign y times x to the fifth times y to the seven dx dy and this integral turns into x to the fifth times y to the eight dx dy same boundaries so we can apply the power rule x to the sixth over six from zero to one times y to the nine over nine from zero to one and we have 48 in front so this is one sixth times this is one ninth times 48 so it's going to be 48 over 54 which is 8 over 9 now we're going to prove whether x and y are independent independency by definition is fx comma y has to be equal to the density functions product fx of x times fy of y for the continuous random variables for discrete random variables it's going to be equal to mass function so we're going to use this first definition because this is continuous random variable so we're going to find the marginal density of x and we're going to find the marginal density of y and we're going to see whether their product is equal to 
our joint density function, which is our original problem here. Now we're going to find the marginal density of x. So marginal density of x is given by integral of the x boundaries from 0 to 1 of the joint density function, which is 48 x to the fifth, y to the seventh, but we're going to do it with respect to dy because we are finding the marginal density of x. So here x is constant because it is with respect to dy, so we can pull that out. And here y to the 7 turns into y to the 8 over 8 from 0 to 1, and it is 1 eighth. And we have 48x to the 5th in front. So this is 1 eighth. And 48x to the 5th divided by 8 is 6x to the 5th. So this is the marginal density function of x. Let's note it here, because we are going to use it. Now, similarly, we are going to find the marginal density of y. So marginal density of y is given by the joint density function but with respect to x. fy of y is equal to 48 times integral from 0 to 1, that's the boundaries of y, x to the 5th, y to the 7th, dx. This time we can pull y to the 8th to the front. And this turns into x to the 6th over 6 from 0 to 1, that is 1 sixth. And for the 8y to the 8th times 1 sixth is 8y to the 7th. And that is the marginal density of fy of y. Now we are going to test whether this product is equal to original density function. So our original joint density function is 48x to the 5th, y to the 7 is equal to 6 times x to the 5th, 8 times y to the 7th. Yes, that is exactly equal. So they are independent. So yes, they are independent. Problem number 9. The joint probability mass function of x and y is given by this table. We are going to compute the conditional mass function of y given x is 3. So what is the probability that y is equal to 1 given x is 3? By definition, this conditional probability, y is being 1 given x is 3, is equal to their intersection, which is probability of 3 comma 1 which is representing x is being 3, y is being 1, over probability of x is being 3. So here we are just using the definition of conditional probability. For example, probability that a given b is equal to probability of a intersect b divided by probability of b. That's what we are applying here. So we are going to pull up the values from the table. So x is being 3 and y is being 1 is only this probability, which is 0 0.1. And probability that x is being 3 is those three values, because x is 3 only in those three values. So which is 0 0.1, 0 0.1, which is 0 0.2. So 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.2 is the answer here. So what is the probability that y is 2 given x is 3? So y is being 2 given x3 means probability that 3 comma 2 over probability that x is equal to 3. We know that probability that x is equal to 3 is 0 0.2 from the previous part. So 
x coordinate is 3, y coordinate is 2 is 0 0.1. Again, the same probability. y is 3, x is 3. y is 3 given x is 3 is probability 3 comma 3 over probability x is equal to 3. So which is 3 comma 3 is 0. 0 divided by anything is 0, so it is 0. Are x and y independent? So we're going to use the definition of independence. If they are independent, then their intersection has to be equal to their product. So probability that x intersect y has to be equal to probability of x times probability of y if they are independent. So we can pick up any value here. Let's pick up probability that x is being 1. So probability that x is being 1 is all values on top here which is 0 0.4 plus 0 0.1 which is 0 0.5 0 0.55 so we picked up probability that x is being 1 so we have to pick the same probability that y is being 1 so probability that y is being 1 is only these columns which is 0 0.4 0 0.5 0 0.6 now their intersection that x is being 1 and y is being 1 is only 0 0.4 so is 0 0.4 equals to this multiplication no so they are not independent we're going to compute the following probabilities so what is the probability that x plus y is greater than 3 so we're going to pick up the values which are greater than 3 so 1 plus 1 is not greater than 3, 1 plus 2 is not greater than 3, 1 plus 3 is greater than 3, 2 plus 1 is not, 2 plus 2 is greater than 3, 2 plus 3 is greater than 3, 3 plus 1 is greater than 3, this is greater than 3, and this is greater than 3. So all the probabilities that x plus y is greater than 3 will be added. 0 0.1, 0 0.2 together. 0 0.25, 0 0.35, 0 0.45. Probability that x times y is 3. Probability that x times y is 3 is only here because 1 times 3 is 3. And here, 3 times 1 is 3. So 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1, which is 0 0.2. Probability that x divided by y is greater than 2. So let's see which one is that. So 1 divided by 1 is not greater than 2, so we eliminate this. 1 divided by 2 is not. 1 divided by 3 is not. 2 divided by 1 is not greater than 2. 2 divided by 2 is not. 2 divided by 3 is not. 3 divided by 1, yes. So 0 0.1 we pick from here. 3 divided by 2 is not greater than 2. And 3 divided by 3 is not greater than 2, so 0 0.1 is the answer here. So here all we have to do is just to interpret the table. Problem number 10. The joint probability mass function of x and y is given by this table. Compute the following probabilities. For this we're going to use this joint mass function table. So I would like to copy paste because we're going to use it multiple times. Part A is asking probability x plus y is greater than 4. So we're going to mark x plus y value greater than 4. So 1 plus 1 is 2 which is not greater than 4 so we skip this probability. So if you observe x plus y value this is greater than 4 because 2 plus 3 is 5 and 3 plus 2 is greater than 4 and 3 plus 3 is greater than 4. So these three probabilities is the answer. 0 0.1 plus 0 0.15 is 0 0.25 plus 0 0.05 is 0 0.30.
part B is asking probability x times y is equal to 2. So we're looking equal to 2. So 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 1 is 2. So these only two probabilities, which is 0 0.05 plus 0 0.05, which is 0 0.1. And the last part of the problem is asking x divided by y is greater than 2. So we're going to check x divided by y greater than 2. 1 divided by 1 is 1, is not greater than 2. So here, 3 divided by 1 is greater than 2. And that is the only probability. Because all others, x value divided by y value is not greater than 2. So 0 0.1 is the answer here. Problem number 11. The joint probability mass function of x and y is given below. And we're going to compute the conditional mass function of y. So here we're going to use the definition of conditional probability, which is probability of A given B is equal to their intersection, probability of A intersect B, divided by the given condition, which is probability of B here. And given condition is always in the second position. Probability of A given B. So this is the given condition here, which is our denominator. Now we're going to use this definition to solve this problem. Since we're going to use this table a few times, I would like to copy paste and work on these tables. So the first part is asking probability of y is equal to 1, x is equal to 1. So that is probability of 1 comma 1, which is probability 1 comma 1 over probability that x is equal to 1. So here, that's their intersection. Probability x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 1 at the same time. The first coordinate is x, the second coordinate is y. And here we are asking actually probability of 1 given 1. So this is 1 comma 1 in the table we can find which is 0 0.55. So that's our numerator. 0 0.55 divided by so our denominator is x being 1. So x being 1 is all row on top here, because all x coordinates here are 1. And 0 0.55 plus 0 0.05 plus 0 0.1 is 0 0.70. Part B is asking the probability of y being 2 given x is 1. So that means 1 comma 2, their intersection, over probability of x is being 1. We already know that probability that x being 1 is 0 0.70. And our numerator is probability that y is being 2. y is being 2 is all this column. Because the second coordinate here, y is being 2. And the sum here is 0 0.15. The next part is asking probability that y is equal to 3 given x is equal to 1. That is, again, their intersection over probability of x is being 1. So here we're going to check 1 comma 3. 1 comma 3 is 0 0.1. Divided by x is being 1 is again this top x is being 1 is 0 0.70, we already knew it. Now we're going to decide whether they are independent or not. So for independency, we're going to use again the definition. If two variables are independent, then their intersection has to be equal to their product. 
here we can pick up one coordinate and work on that. Let's work on x being 1 and y being 1 and here then 1 comma 1 their intersection. So we will confirm whether it is true or not. Probability that x is 1 and y is 1 is 0 0.55. Probability that only x is being 1 is the top row here which is 0 0.70 and probability that y is being 1 is only second coordinate is being 1 so it is this column which is 0 0.65 and as we can see that this product is not equal to that so they are not independent. 